good afternoon to all of you in this signal space analysis motivation for this one we can represent the signal as a sinusoidal signal that is by using your magnitude and phase spectrum that is s of t can be represented s of t can be represented as a of t cos 2 pi f c t plus psi signal can be represented by its magnitude and phase information similarly signal can be represented by its uh, quadrature multiplication that is s of t into cos of 2 pi f c t minus here s of t 1 and 2 sine of 2 pi f c t equation for the signal space representation we can represent the signal by using here it's a man magnitude and phase spectrum similarly it can be represented by its in phase and quadrature component same way we can represent the signal as a summation of its uh, coefficient with the basis function when we can say that for this two coordinate system phi 1 and phi 2 with various values we can represent this s1 s2 and s3 so here we can say that your si si of t that is equal to summation over j is equal to 1 to n s i j into phi j of t in this example we have considered three modulated system three signals s1 s2 s3 this total signal it can be represented as s i of t is a summation of j is equal to 1 to n s i j this is a coefficient and this phi j of t is nothing but a basis function so for these three signals our job is we have to find out the basis functions so we can represent every signal by using its a basis functions so here when we consider we have to represent this first signal s1 s1 so here s1 of t that is equal to s1 j is 1 phi j is 1 here projection of this first signal s1 on the basis function phi1 this will gives s i j coefficient of this signal coefficient of this signals s i or we can see that projection of this s1 signal on first basis function in this way we can represent every signal for second signal s2 it can be represented by its coefficient and basis function coefficient is nothing but projection of s2 signal on phi1 similarly projection of s2 signal on phi2 so when we consider n number of signals our job is we have to find out their corresponding basis functions and we have to represent every signal by using its a basis function by using its a basis function so fourier series and fourier transform they are nothing but here we are using the two basis function that is your cos and sine every signal with its a multiple frequencies different frequency it can be projected on these two basis functions phi 1 of j and phi 2 of j that is nothing but cos and sine so this is the third representation for to represent the signal in a geometric space first way we can represent signal using this modulation system that is by using its a uh, magnitude and phase information then second way we can represent signal by using its a uh, quadrature representation where we have, we have to consider the in phase component and quadrature component similarly in third way we can represent signal by using its a uh, geometric representation so signal can be represented by using its a 
coefficient and basis function. So, write down this point. Signal can be represented by using its a basis function. Here we have to consider message source, transmitter, channel and receiver. This message source can transmit one symbol of capital T second. This message source can transmit one symbol of capital T seconds. So, here we will get MI symbols. This transmitter takes the symbol add on here this transmitter here you have to write down takes the symbol takes symbol in bracket data m i takes the symbol or data m i and encodes it into a and encodes it into signal yes i of t yes i of t these symbols i don't symbols belongs to alphabet symbols belongs to alphabet capital M in bracket M1, M2 these symbols are belongs to alphabet capital M, M1, M2, M3 up to MM. Next point symbols are equally likely probable symbols are equally likely probable equally likely probable probable when we consider two symbols 0 and 1 that means we are sending 0 and 1 with equal probability with a probability of 0 0.5 so here when this symbol they are transmitted over this channel input to this receiver is x of t and we can say that this x of t is equal to s i of t that is a desired modulated signal plus w of t that is your white noise and output you will get m cap m cap is nothing but estimate of m i estimate of m i estimate of m i from this side we are in the message which get coded with M symbols, alphabets, capital M, which are ranging from M1, M2, M3 up to MM. So, here for this transmitter, we will get different symbols, S, I of T. Here, when we consider these symbols at 0 or 1, so we are having the sequence of this 0 and 1. They are transmitted over the channel. At receiver, we will get X of T. This X of T is nothing but combination of your desired symbols, S, I of T plus W of T. Here W of T is nothing but your adaptive white version and noise with a zero mean and output a transmitter output we will get M cap. M cap is nothing but an estimate of M i. Estimate of M i. So here our job is we have to represent this S i of T 
which are having the different symbols by using your geometric representation s i of t is equal to summation over j is equal to 1 s i j into phi j of t where this t is ranging between 0 to capital T and i is equal to 1, 2, 3 up to m. Here yes i of t this is a signal or symbol yes i j this is nothing but coefficient write down this is the coefficient and this phi j of t is nothing but orthogonal basis function orthogonal basis function orthogonal basis function this coefficient s i j that is equal to integration over 0 to t s i of t into phi j of t dt where i is ranging between 1, 2, 3 up to capital M and this j is ranging between 1, 2, 3 up to capital N. S i j is nothing but a coefficient or we can say that this is nothing but a projection of ith signal on jth basis function. This is nothing but projection of ith signal on basis function j. So here i is ranging from 1, 2, 3 up to m means we are having the m symbols, m signals. We can represent M signals by using capital N basis function. So definitely this capital N is less than or equal to capital M. Write down. This capital N is less than or equal to capital M. So we can represent this N signals by using only two basis function. In last example, we have considered here orthogonal basis function. Orthogonal basis function, this coefficient s i j that is equal to integration over 0 to t s i of t into phi j of t dt where i is ranging between 1, 2, 3 up to capital M and this j is ranging between 1, 2, 3 up to capital N. S i j is nothing but a coefficient or we can say that this is nothing but a projection of i th signal on j th basis function. This is nothing but projection of i th signal on basis function j. So here i is ranging from 1, 2, 3 up to m means we are having the m symbols, m signals. We can represent M signals by using capital N basis function. So definitely this capital N is less than or equal to capital M. Write down. This capital N is less than or equal to <coughs> capital M. So we can represent this N signals by using only two basis function. In last example, we have considered here
So here we are having the three signals or three symbols S1, S2, S3. That means capital M is equal to 3. And we are in the two basis function F1 and F2. F1 and F2, these are the two basis functions. That means capital N is equal to 2. N is equal to 2. So we can represent every signal. S1, here S1 is can be represented as summation over S1 j into phi j of t. Yes, we want to represent this signal S1 of t that is equal to summation over j is equal to 1 to j is equal to 1 to 2. <coughs> Here this coefficient it will give us S1 into j and this one is phi j of t. Phi j of t. So we can represent this S1 signal by using its a basis function. So here we can see that S1 of t that is equal to summation of coefficient S1 when we consider j is equal to 1. For j is equal to 1. Here S11 it indicates that projection of this S1 on first basis function F1. This value becomes 3. This value becomes 3. So here we have to write down this is as 3 into phi j of t here phi 1 of t plus s1 of t for j is equal to 2 j is equal to 2 here we will get s12 it is nothing but projection of this s1 on second basis function this value becomes 1 now this value becomes 1 so s12 is 1 into phi 2 of 2 or in this one we can say that 3 into f1 plus 1 into f2. Is it clear to all of you? Here main idea is we can represent every signal by using it's a basis function. So here for this example we have to consider three signals S1, S2, S3. They are represented in geometrical space by using two basis functions F1 and F2. So here capital M is equal to 3 and capital N is equal to 2. So S1 of t here we have to represent first signal S1 of t is equal to summation j is equal to 1 to 2 S1 j into phi j of t here S1 j is nothing but a coefficient and phi j of t is nothing but a basis function. So for j is equal to 1 we can say that S11 that is the projection of your first signal S1 on first basis function. So this projection this gives the value 3. This is the value corresponding to S11 into phi j phi 1 of t phi 1 of t is nothing but F1 plus it is a projection of on your second basis function. When we put j is equal to 2 we will get S12 this value indicates S12 projection of your first signal on second basis function into phi 2 of t. So here this function is nothing but 1 into F2. So we will get this S1 can be represented by using its coefficient and basis function. So main idea is here we can represent any signal by using its basis function. So S1 can be represented as 3 into F1 plus 1 into F2. Similarly we can represent this S2 signal. S2 we can say that S2 is equal to 1 into F1 plus 3 into F2. <coughs> Similarly our S3 2 into F1 
minus 2 into F2. This is called as geometric representation of your signal. Now, we have to find out for multiple signals, what should be the value of this basis function. You are given a sequence of your signals, we are having the M signals. So, from this M signals, we have to derive N basis functions. In the geometric space analysis, we have to find out N basis functions and we have to represent all these signals by using this N and M signals. So, here this basis function they are given as some properties of basis function here integration over 0 to t phi i of t into phi j of t dt is equal to delta i j they will take value 1 if i is equal to j and 0 if i is not equal to j or we can say that integration from minus infinity to infinity phi j of t into phi k of t dt we will get 0 c j when j is not equal to k and j is equal to k. 1 for all j, for all the values of j, we can say that this phi k of t is an orthogonal set, is an orthogonal set of basis functions. is an orthogonal set of basis function. That means their inner product becomes 0. A dot B is equal to 0. That means vector A and B, they are orthogonal to each other. Projections of A on projection, projection of vector A on B is equal to 0. So, here we have to consider the set of K basis function phi K of T. It is a set of K basis functions which are orthogonal to each other. That means their inner product becomes 0. So, here when we when we consider two basis functions x and y, two axes x and y, they are orthogonal to each other because projection of y on x becomes 0, projection of x becomes on y becomes 0. They are perpendicular to each other. Here we have to consider these are these vectors or these basis functions which are the set of k, they are orthogonal to each other. That means they are perpendicular to each other. So, we are, here we have to see the procedure to find out the basis function. This is known as Give a heading <coughs> Graham Smith Ortho. Consider the signal set with value S1 of T, S2 of T up to Sm of T. Find the orthogonal basis function find the orthogonal basis function for this signal phi 1 of t, phi 2 of t up to phi k of t. Here k is less than or equal to capital M. These signals can be represented S i of t is equal to summation j is equal to 1 to capital M. S i j into phi j of t. 
first step find out first basis function find out first basis function that is phi 1 of t so this phi 1 of t it can be given as 1 by root e1 into s1 of t first basis basis function can be given as 1 by root e1 into s1 of t here e1 is nothing but energy associated with your first signal we are having the set of m signal s1 of t s2 of t up to sm of t correspondingly we have to find out the basis function phi 1 of t phi 2 of t up to phi k of t here signal can be represented by using its uh, basis function so si of t is equal to summation or j is equal to 1 to m sij into phi j of t so we have to find out these values so first step we have to make j is equal to 1 we have to find out the first basis function by using this procedure phi 1 of t is given as 1 by root e1 into s1 of t so here e1 it can be given as integration e1 is nothing but energy associated with your first signal e1 is nothing but minus infinity to infinity s1 of t square dt that is the expected value of x square of t in this way we have to find out the mean energy associated with your first signal e1 so here we are having s1 of t it can be given as from this one s1 of t it can be given as s11 into phi 1 of t so this is s11 into phi 1 of t this coefficient s11 is nothing but integration from infinity to infinity s1 of t into phi 1 of t dt so this is nothing but root e1 into phi 1 of t <coughs> and here this value becomes so finally we can say that s11 this coefficient is equal to root e1 square root of energy associated with your first signal e1 is it clear phi 1 of t first basis function it can be given as 1 by square root of e1 into s1 of t s1 of t this is your first signal here e1 of t is nothing but energy associated with your first signal that is nothing but integration or minus infinity to infinity s1 of s1 of t square dt here we can see that this phi 1 of t or basis function is nothing but normalization of your first signal s1 of t with its energy so by using this formula s1 of t can be represented as this s1 of t is equal to square root of e1 into phi 1 of t <coughs> square root of e1 into phi 1 of t by using this formula s1 of t is equal to square root of e1 into phi 1 of t similarly by using this procedure we can say that s1 of t is equal to s11 into phi 1 of t in this way s11 into phi 1 of t by comparing these two things we can see that s1 of t is equal to square root of e1 into phi 1 of t is it clear we have to compare these two equations we will get this value so here s11 is nothing but integration or minus infinity to infinity s1 of t into phi 1 of t so this becomes root e1 similarly we have to find out second basis function write down next step second basis function correlation between second signal 
and basis function 1 correlation between second signal and basis function 1 that is s to 1 is equal to integration or minus infinity to t infinity s2 of t into phi 1 of t dt or we can say that this is nothing but a projection of second signal on first basis function we have to find out projection of second signal on your first basis function so we have to find out intermediate function g2 of t that is equal to s2 of t minus s21 phi1 of t <coughs> so energy associated with this second signal is given as integration or minus infinity to infinity and the second basis function phi 2 of t is equal to 1 by root and this <coughs> s22 coefficient is given as integration over minus infinity to infinity s2 of t into phi 2 of t dt is equal to root e g of t. To find out the second basis function, projection of second signal on first basis function that is this s21 is equal to integration from minus infinity to infinity s2 of t into phi 1 of t dt. So, here we have to find out the intermediate function g2 of t is nothing but s2 of t second function minus s2 s21 into phi 1 of t. Here we have to find out energy associated with this intermediate function energy associated with this one is given as eg2 so here this second basis function phi2 of t is nothing but 1 by root energy associated with intermediate function into g2 of t intermediate function similarly we have, we have to find out <coughs> we have to find out intermediate function or third basis function phi3 of t here we have to find out the projection of this third signal on first basis function S31. Similarly, we have to find out projection of this third signal on second basis function that is S32. And by using this one, we have to find out intermediate function here G2 of t is nothing but S to second signal minus s21 into phi1 of t when we have to find out third intermediate function g3 of t is equal to third signal minus projection of third signal on first basis function s31 into phi1 of t minus s32 into phi2 of t are you got it this is your third intermediate function now we can see that energy associated with this signal this is nothing but eg3 capital eg3 is equal to integration over minus infinity to infinity here intermediate function g3 of t so third basis function phi 3 of t is equal to 1 by root energy associated with intermediate function g3 of t into intermediate function g3 of t it is still continue up to last basis function which is k. So, write down for last basis function for signal s k of t for signal s k of t this s k i is equal to integration over minus infinity to infinity 
एस के ऑफ टी इंटू फाइ आई ऑफ टी डी टी सो दिस इज अंटरमीडिएट फंक्शन जी के ऑफ टी इंटरमीडिएट फंक्शन फॉर के बेसिस फंक्शन जी के ऑफ टी इज नथिंग बट एस के ऑफ टी लास्ट सिग्नल एस के ऑफ टी माइनस समेशन ओवर आई इज इक्वल टू वन टू कैपिटल के माइनस वन एस के आई फाइव आई ऑफ टी हियर एनर्जी एसोसिएटेड विद दिस वन इंटरमीडिएट फंक्शन इज गिवन एज इंटीग्रेशन और माइनस इंफिनिटी टू इंफिनिटी एंड द लास्ट बेसिस फंक्शन फाइ के ऑफ टी दैट इज इक्वल टू वन बाय रूट हियर and this s k k is nothing but integration over minus infinity to infinity s k of t is it clear to all of you <coughs> Here to calculate the kth basis function phi k of t, here we will get this s k i. That is the projection of kth signal, projection of i signal on kth basis function. That is equal to integration over s k of t into phi i of t dt. Here we have to find out the intermediate function. That is s k of t minus summation over i is equal to one to k s k i into phi of t so here energy associated with intermediate signal so kth basis function it can be given as 1 by root of energy associated with your intermediate function into intermediate function in this way we have to find out for m signals there are k basis function k is less than or equal to m capital m means this basis functions are equal to or less than the signals in this way we have to find out all these values for basis function so write down the problem regarding this one we are having the three signals for this three signal we have to find out the basis function for this three signals we have to represent these signals by using a basis function and finally we have to find out draw the space diagram geometric representation for these three signals so here capital m is equal to 3 so capital n or k is less than or equal to Three, so we can find out maximum three basis functions. So out of which we have to find out first basis function phi one of t, which is given as one by root e one into s one of t. 
So energy associated with your first signal E1 is equal to integration from 0 to 1 minus infinity to plus infinity S1 of t square dt. Here we are in the integration from 0 to 2 S1 of t square dt. Here S1 of t for the range 0 to 2 is 1. So integration from 0 to 2 of 1 into dt. So this value becomes 2. So energy associated with this one first signal is E1 that is equal to 2. So can we find out the basis function? Phi 1 of t that is equal to 1 by root 2 into S1 of t. Phi 1 of t is equal to 1 by root 2 into S1 of t. So here we will get this first basis function Similarly, you have to find out second basis function phi 2 of 2. Here we will get the value for S11. Find out the value for S11. S11 is equal to integration from minus infinity to infinity S1 of t into phi 1 of t. <coughs> S11 that is equal to integration from minus infinity to infinity S1 of t into phi 1 of t that is equal to root of E1, root of E1. So here we will get the value S11 that is equal to root 2. Now we have to find out the second basis function phi 2 of 2. Here for this phi 2 of 2 we have to find out S21 projection of second signal on first basis function. So S21, write down this S21. S21 is nothing but integration from minus infinity to infinity. S2 of t into phi 1 of t dt is equal to 0. S2 of t into phi 1 of t. Here, the second signal, S2 of t into phi 1 of t. Phi 1 of t is present for 0 to 2. This first S2 of t, it is present for after 2. So this integration becomes 0. So here, we have to find out intermediate function G2 of t that is equal to <coughs> S2 of t minus S21 into phi 1 of t. Projection of second signal on your first signal S21 into phi 1 of t. Phi 1 of t is given this way. S1 of t, S12 becomes S21 becomes 0. So this G2 of t is equal to S2 of t. G2 of t becomes S2 of t. So find out energy associated with this signal and we will get this second basis function phi 2 of t is equal to 1 by root eg2 into s2 of t. <coughs> so here we will get second basis function. phi 2 of t 0 1 2 and 3 with the value 1 
<coughs> so here S22 projection of second signal on second one is 1 by root eg2. So S22 is equal to root energy associated with second intermediate function. And finally, we have to find out the third basis function. For third basis function, we have to project, we have to find out projection of third signal on first basis function and projection of third signal on second basis function. Then we have to take energy associated with intermediate function and find out this phi 3 of t. Third basis function is equal to 1 by root energy associated with g3 of t into s3 of t. So finally, we will get basis function for this phi 3 of t, it might be comes to be 0. So we can represent this signal s1 of 2 that is equal to root 2 phi 1 of t, s2 of 2 that is phi 2 of t and S3 of t is root 2 phi 1 of t plus phi 2 of t. <coughs> so this third basis function becomes 0. So we can represent these th three signals by using these two basis functions. S1 of t is equal to root phi 1 of t, S2 of 2 and this S3 of t. So it is a space diagram. Here we have to consider two basis function phi 1 of t, phi 2 of t. Here this is your S1, S2 and this one is S3. This value is 1, 1 by root 2. 